Again, the meeting of the MUD 39. Welcome, everyone. We'll start by one calling the meeting to order, which we just did. Thank you for that. Uh, number two is receive comments from the public. Ron? Bukowski, I live in Harper's Landing at 14 East Mike's Bridge Drive. We travel up and down to uh, our area, including Trade Center Boulevard. And uh, I've been working with uh, Mike Mooney and other people about uh, ditch that are in the road that coincides traversely across the roadway or utility lines. And uh, for those of you that don't know me, I am a licensed professional engineer. I've uh, been doing engineering work here in this area since 78, graduated in 73 from Next Tech, cut out of the behavior. And uh, so I know a little bit about what goes on with utility lines. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't be able to make a prior two meetings where this was on the agenda. I had other meetings. I still have an active engineering firm. And so I need to address my client's needs. But there's still uh, the concern. And if you drive the posted speed limit in my cars, and I have two different ones, Toyota Highlander and uh, Infinity, and they both go airborne at the posted speed when you hit one specific area. And I'd like to work with y'all to look at whether or not that trench was ever backfilled with cement stabilized sand. And I have a hand auger that I use in my work, and I would like maybe for somebody to from the district or any of y'all to come out there with me uh, under y'all's watch and, and watch it to determine if there's actually cement stabilized sand backfill above that line. And it's easy to do from the back of curves and behind the land. And I can go down as much as five feet if I need to uh, to determine if there is any cement stabilized sand. And it's very easy to do. And so my contention is it certainly appears that there is no cement stabilized sand backfill above that line. So that trench is settled causing the, the dip in the road. And so I'd like for district to consider to, to act on that. I know there's no agenda items today. My apologies for not sure coming in earlier. Well, actually, Ron, there is an agenda item. So if you want to stick around till we get to that and we'll have some discussion about it, we'll get a report from staff um, and then maybe that can answer some questions for you or give you some additional information. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ron. Any other comments from the public? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item number three. Consider and act on request for adjustments to the relief from the specific charges imposed by the district. None? None. Moving on, we're moving on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes uh, six items. Uh, we'll take those all in unison unless someone has a reason to pull any item out of the consent agenda. Anything from the board members, gentlemen? No, nothing. All right, then we'll need to entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented and get a second on that. I move this be approved. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. Uh, Kevin's abstaining because he was at he was absent from the last meeting. Right. And it includes the minutes of the agenda. Yep. All right, motion is approved and carries. Thank you very much for that. Moving on to the regular agenda item number 10, receive and act upon staff information regarding the upcoming MCAD Board of Directors election for the term of January 1st, 24 through December of 25. So um, last month we reported that um, the first step in the process mm -hmm. was that a district needed to um, acknowledge that they would be interested in participating in the election that occurred. Metro MUD made that uh, motion. Uh, the next process, the next step in the process is for a district or someone to nominate a nominee. Uh, Metro did that also um, a couple days ago. Uh, their nomination was uh, Arthur Bredehoff. And uh, so there's no action for you to take unless you would like to nominate someone else. Um, I I think we did discuss it at our last meeting and we discussed that Mr. Bredehoff's nomination was satisfactory to us, but would it be appropriate for Arthur just to introduce himself and kind of give us a little bit of his background? Arthur, would you mind doing that since? 
It's an honor to be here with uh, Mud39, President Stanley. Um, currently, I serve on MCAT board. It's uh, from the term 2022 to the end of 23. Prior to that, I did serve an unexpired term on the NCAD board uh, the, uh, October of 20, uh, 2018 till December of 2019. Some of the other um, committees I'm involved with in the community, I serve on Region H, which is uh, one of the regions under the Texas Board of Development Board. I represent the Woodlands. I've been on that since August of 22. I'm a director on Metro Mud in the Woodlands. And also serve on the uh, Development Standards Committee for the Township. I've been on that since uh, 2018. Uh, my current term ends in uh, December of 23. I'm also on the Library Advisory Board. I've been on that since uh, 2012 for the uh, for the county. And uh, prior to that, RDRC since uh, um, 1999. So uh, it's a pleasure and honor to represent various uh, committees and residents of not only the Woodlands, but Montgomery County. So I appreciate your support. As far as the special district election that uh, uh, Eric uh, mentioned, I contacted 111 special purpose districts that are, have the opportunity to vote in the special purpose district election. There's a total of 796 votes under the special purpose district. Um, the MUDs in the Woodlands have a total, when you add them all up, it's 96 votes. So part three is in July, the special purpose districts get the vote for the candidate and to lodge their votes for the MCAT the chief appraiser. And then if you win the special purpose district, you still have to go into the big election and we'll have to look for uh, votes from the uh, state of cities, ISDs, um, in order to be successful to win the election for the term of 24 to 25. But I appreciate the opportunity to be here and appreciate your support. And thank you for all you do for your month 39. Thank you, Arthur, very much. Um, I did have a question about the number of votes. I was looking at page uh, 15 and six, 15, 16 and 17 of our packet. And on page 17, it lists the Woodlands Township MUDs, I guess, or that the Woodlands Township in and of itself. In and of itself. So I didn't see the MUDs. Um, specifically listed other than Montgomery County Mud 39. Is that us? Mm -hmm. So we're listed here with um there are uh, all of the Woodlands Muds are also listed. So we have one vote base oh five five votes. Is that correct? Okay. And it's oh. based on your tax levy. Gotcha. Okay. So, That's what I was going to ask what it's based on. Okay. The more tax levy, the greater the, the more votes. Gotcha. So I guess what Arthur just said is there's a twofold step, a two process, two step process for him to get elected. And next month will be the voting step, the final step. And as we discussed, we were all in favor of author last time, but I guess before we leave this agenda item, we should ask, are there any other nominations that we want to consider? <laughs> no. All right. Thank you, Mr. Breedhoff, and good luck. Can I ask you, so our, our vote as a board will, all five votes will then, okay. We, we need right. to vote for author next, 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 next month. Next month. Next month. Yeah. Okay. So the, right now is just a nomination process. Perfect. And that's already been done by that trip. Okay. All right. And we're just following along with theirs. All right. So we're moving on to item number 11, received the San Jacinto River Authority Woodlands Division report, including an update on infrastructure funding, draft Woodlands Division budget for 2024, and AC water lines. Chris? A few things to cover, as you mentioned. The first one is on page 52. Under the SJRA Woodlands Division report, this is a trustee summary, but uh, Ed Shackleford made a statement at the trustees meeting related to Jace Houston resigning and how the river authority is going to go forward. I point that to you. I was asked to read it, but it's in here. I can read it to y'all or y'all can refer to it. Or if you have any questions, I can answer those related to Jace's position. Uh, we do have an agenda item that uh, we're going to consider a resolution. I think all the other MUDs are going to consider a resolution relative to that. So maybe we can at least hold that discussion for that item and then we can just take the rest of your report That'd be great. if that's okay with everyone mm -hmm. the next item uh we have no update on the infrastructure funding we're still working with the consultant to move forward and find funds and ways to move more funds from state and federal government to the, the woodlands muds as well as the river to woodland. the second item we have on there which is a draft woodlands budget this is the budget that was presented last month 
is the budget S4 FY24 starting September 1, running through August 31st of 24. It does not include all the 10 year project plan bond fund financing audits. It's only for the one year budget. Okay. That budget came with a 2% uh, wholesale increase on water and sewer. And it also reflected a 0% increase on the GRP. Just a reminder, next month is the vote where the Mudge will direct their uh, trustee on how to vote officially at the August trustees. The last item I have is on page 36 related to AC water lines. It starts on page 36 and runs through 41. <clears throat> we have received uh, 16 questions from two mud directors. And so what we've done is we've answered their questions and we wanted to give those questions and answers to all the buds and all the directors so you can see it. So we've gone through and answered a majority of them. Three we did not answer. Nine, 10, and 11, we didn't have all the data to answer. So what you'll see on page 41 is the estimated dollar amount and timeline to answer those. So two of them equate to about $175,000 and about six to nine months of total work to get done. The third one is to be determined. Uh, we're still looking into that. All in all, uh, kind of cut to the chase, as I've told the other MUDs, I don't recommend doing this work for $175,000. We don't have any data on hand that's going to make it a relative or move the needle at all. So answer the question, show the cost amount if the MUDs decide to go forward. That's, you know, y'all's prerogative, but our recommendation is not to move forward with this amount, but look into other maybe testing methods of the AC pipe. So. And just for the board's benefit, I guess that we probably should mention that the conversation about the AC lines is to replace the water lines. Right. And you guys have a plan in place. We, all of us collectively, have a plan in place to re replace the, quarter, the water lines over a specific period of time, numbers of years. Right. Right now, it's a, our recommendations a 13 year period is a 10 year plan for financing, 13 years for replacement. And so you'll look to us next month to have a vote on whether or not to approve this $175,000. Is that what you just said? We're going to talk about it at the trustees, and I'm going to try to see if you want to, guys want to leave it as a consider an act or discuss an act to give you all the flexibility to vote if you so choose. You know, over the course of uh, the last 48 hours, it's a, a definite uh, evolving conversation about how to handle the timing of the that work. Um, so n nothing's been decided necessarily by anybody. Of course, the, the trustees will kind of contemplate that, uh, I guess, next month, but um, it's definitely evolving uh, at the moment. And when I say that, the, the debate has been how much analysis do we need to do to pinpoint when the projects need to be done? Um, because right now your 10 year plan contemplates when they ought to be done based on a certain criteria that was used. And what's in question is, have we done enough um, analyzing to truly know if that's if it's the right time now or can it be put off so that's what's being debated are you prepared at this point to kind of give us a somewhat of a recommendation from staff in general as to the based on the criteria we once used compared to i think what these questions lead to is should there be additional analysis and chris is already saying that he's not recommending to doing the additional analysis but what would be well so woodlands waters take what chris just referred to was in the packet, it contemplates twenty-five thousand and another one hundred fifty thousand to essentially do a sharpening uh, of the desktop study that you already have. Problem, and I agree with I agree with him that we have is that in order to do a deeper dive into the existing analysis that's been done, you would need to enter in additional data. Right. Uh, the data that we have at this point is not very thorough, and so you would. You would be put there's junk in junk out basically right there's not enough good data to make a difference if, even if you 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 can get, keep an uh, analyzing the bad data or the really not bad data the lack of right. enough data I, I would probably say the best um you're just not going to mm -hmm. get it out so the debate is do we do we put a program together to um get more data uh, and then then we can actually put it into uh, a more thorough analysis. So I think that's that's what's being uh, discussed quite a bit in the in the meetings. Any questions or thoughts? Everybody kind of get the gist of what's happening here. Yeah, what what would be if that is the 
resolution to get more data. What what would be the time frame on that? Do we have any idea? <laughs> well, because we've had this data for I'm assuming a while now, right? We have uh, decent records back to 2000, but we don't have decent data to complete this analysis. Right, that's what I mean. So we would have to compile all that additional data and then do the analysis of that data, which would prolong this for how long? Depends how long the data is collected, okay. depends what testing is done. Some of it's okay. constructive testing where we take out the pipe and look just at the pipe. Some of it's uh, probability analysis, prediction mm -hmm. analysis. But you have to use a lot of assumptions in some cases. Right. So one thing to keep in mind is a lot of the tests and articles and stuff that directors are passing around is just looking at just the pipe itself. It's not just the pipe we're looking at. It's an entire system of the ground, the bedding, the installation, the gaskets, the joints. There's a lot of stuff to look at besides just the pipe. So okay. yeah, there are other you know, So what he's referring to, there's there's been some articles, there's been some studies around the country. Um, where other municipalities have looked at this and, you know, there's there's several different trains of thought when analyzing uh, pipe or this, you know, AC pipe. One is an, an age uh, analysis to say if the standard uh, life of this particular type of pipe is 50 to 70 years then and we're at 50 years, then maybe it makes sense that we need to go do it. And that's kind of where we are today. Um, there's another train of thought, which is kind of shown in some of these articles and these studies that other municipalities across the country have done, is to, to do some of the analysis that he just mentioned, actually taking pipe out of the ground, <laughs> analyzing it, doing a bunch of things to it. And some of those municipalities are reporting that, in their opinion, uh, they might be able to get 90, 100, or even more years. So to answer your question, okay. it could be that Okay. Or it could say, nope, we got to do it right now. We're in trouble. You yeah. know, it just depends. Um, what those other municipalities reported is that, well, I can push those projects off and I don't need to spend that that money for quite some time. So uh, that's kind of what what and, the what the result might be. But the <clears throat> date, but this analysis here for the additional evaluation for the one hundred seventy five thousand. I mean, that's not going to tell us any of that, right? That's just going to be additional analysis off the data we currently have. The one we're talking about is the next one down, the TBD. Yeah, yeah. And the TBD okay. is what we, is TBD. We don't know it. We, yeah. We, that's kind of the what big we're, D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a, yeah. Um, because yeah. we're just now okay. kind of uncovering some of these studies and things like that. Um, we're going to be reaching out or SJA and we're going to, Keep investigating what what are other municipalities doing, and is it a right the right fit for us? And how, what does it cost? What's it going to take? Uh, build a program. I mean, one one school of thought was that maybe we go forward with the first project, and as we're doing that, we we can take pieces of pipe out from the poor pits and do some kind of analysis. That's been an idea, uh, but then what does that do? What do, do we take that pipe out? What do we do with the data? So we'd have to kind of build a program for what that would look like that would potentially assist in making decisions on the future pipes. Yeah. The only dilemma in that is that um, that's that pipe. So a pipe three streets over might have been put in with another contractor right. with different methods or yeah. or different back, you know, whatever. We don't know that for sure. So if we, if we look from today, look back, how has the process we're using today served us? Has it served us well in determining when projects, when repairs need to be done or if if something occurs, we repair it? Have, have we been able to proactively see anything based on the process that we currently use? So <clears throat> this is the first time on our side we've started looking at water lines to replace. But on the sewer side, we've used the same general methodology. Of course, you can put a camera, you can put a uh, smart balls and stuff down there and you can actually get better because it's not full pipe under pressure. Yeah. Uh, we have done some of the same technologies on the wastewater side we looked at on the water side, but we didn't find them reliable on the wastewater side. But um, kind of to answer your question, I think it has been. We are proactive in what we do. The MUDs have always asked for a high level of service, be proactive. And when you go through natural disasters, tax day floods, hurricanes, mm -hmm you name it, even COVID and everything else when everybody's home, there was never a drop in level of service. You always had water, you always had sewer and everything else. 
And so that's where I kind of look at and say, yeah, it's been a high level of service and we've achieved our goal of reliability of the whole system. Now you have this reliability kind of interjecting with, you know, financial at this point in the economy, which is where y'all come. Right. Okay, so kind of to summarize this point, what we're going to be looking for from the board is direction for me when I go to the trustee meeting to state whether or not we want to approve these additional costs. Well, uh, not necessarily. I think I think what what occurred at the trustee meeting was there was a motion and second with no vote uh, that 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 would happen. However, that didn't pass. Right. And so right. So I think the action that's going to occur is this topic is going to be on the trustee meeting again, and it's going to be discussed again. And and so that may create some additional actions, but at this point in time. Okay. You know, whether they ask for the months to go back to their trustee and all that, I don't know. But um, that did not pass. So, okay. All I right. think it'll just be a fresh discussion again. All right. That's all I have. Thank you, Chris. Okay. All right. Item number 12 received the attorney's report. Brian? Yes, sir. So, if you've had a chance to check the Google Drive this morning, uh, yesterday <laughs> evening, our legislative summary. So, uh, it's you know, healthy. 20 something pages as usual um, as you have a chance uh, take a look at it a lot of bills that are that we talked about over the course of the session are addressed in here the uh, omnibus bill that we talked about a few times uh, is addressed here as well that has a number of, of fixes for the water district community that's uh, house bill 2815 we talked about that throughout the session. Maybe they did not get vetoed by the uh, governor because there were some of the vetoes at the end of his veto period, which expired Sunday night at midnight. Uh, so we will be working with our district clients to implement um, uh, any changes to your existing uh, documents or um, policies and procedures in the coming months as we do each second. So. That's where we are on the legislative session. There are some special sessions that we, um, there's only been one called. We anticipate there will be more related to property tax relief and school vouchers, school choice. At this point, the proposals, the competing proposals from the House and the Senate for property tax relief would be solely focused on school district taxes and would not have any impact on uh, district taxes, district values, uh, how they're appraised, what caps are applicable to them. We'll continue to monitor that and let you know if that changes. That's all I have. All right. Thank Happy you very much. Yeah. Any questions? All right. Uh, so receive item number 13, receive an act uh, on the resolution in support of Jace Houston. So Eric, you want to take the introduction on that? Uh, you have a copy there uh, in front of you. Um, this is something that uh, was created originally probably about a month ago. It's morphed into many different forms over that time period. It was initially kind of thought up um, to voice um, frustration at how the legislative process was going at the time. Um, now that process is over, um, the bills have passed, et cetera, et cetera, Jace has resigned. So it's morphed into this version um, and uh, there's it's it's on some months agendas. It didn't make it on all of them. So the ones that it didn't make it on, uh, they're going to be putting it on their uh, July agendas. So those that it's been on, um, they've considered it, looked at it, and and decided um, to work with me to to finalize any of the verbiage, and then entrust their uh, president to sign it on the board's behalf. That's what they've done. That's what the other months have done that has it on the agenda like you do. Um, so that's what's going on elsewhere. Um, I think the intention or the <laughs> hope from um, the other MUDs is that they have concurrent, full concurrence from all the MUDs. And what does that look like at this point? Do you have an idea? I know you said two MUDs. How many MUDs are going to consider it in July? Um, I think it's about half. It's it's either five five or six four roughly that it got on the agendas. I think it might be ha almost half. So at this point, all muds have have accepted it to their agenda, have put it on their agenda, or will put it on their agenda. Uh, not all yet, but we expect that they will. probably will by the end of the day. It's those that it wasn't 
on their agenda half yes and brian I'm, sh I'm assuming you've looked at this and kind of so i did no. not go through and, and work with that this has been a grassroots resolution so to speak i, I briefly looked at it for um, uh, just to make sure that it was not um, just purely political in nature right. and was more uh, policy based and i think what the the directors who've worked on it so far uh, have, have tried to do is to, to tie it to the uh, groundwater usage and district participation, the GRP. So I think there's a there's a nexus there between mud business uh, and that and that resolution. But I, I didn't you know go through and work with it or, or pass on the you know whether it's a, a good idea or not. Right. Good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess mainly my concern would be if we were to sign it as a board collectively, individually, um, is there any liability or is there any accusations that are in here well, anywhere? That's, or? That's, that's a big question. I can't, I can't speak to how people are going to react to a, a resolution like that. I mean, that's part of part of what the board has to decide. It, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? And is it worth whatever um, uh, issues it would create mm -hmm. uh, whether it be political or otherwise and that's right. that's really a decision for the board that, that was going to be my question is what 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 is the resolution trying to accomplish yeah that's a grant it was it was a grassroots resolution from directors so there was a um, one director who was with a point person you can visit maybe with eric about that okay. offline and okay in touch if you want more information about what was driving the the purpose of the resolution. Yeah, and I, and I can say that uh, I asked what who is the audience also? That's what's going to be my next question. <laughs> and, and the response was uh, Estuary Board, uh, Lone Star Board, uh, the Township, uh, and potentially media outlets um, to get it out. OK. Um, uh, I think maybe everyone else in the room understands this, but I feel a little confused here. Um, why did Jace resign? Well, here's a little background and you guys chime in when you need to and tell me when I'm off course. So supposedly there were some le a legislative movement to get him to resign, right? So the senator, local senator, local representative put forth a resolution or put forth the legislation that would force him to resign and that the SJRA could not hire his replacement or not could not hire someone who worked at the SJRA for the previous six months is my understanding of that. So that kind of ticked a few people off amongst the muds and people in the community and so forth, because now they feel like the legislature was stepping over its boundaries and removing an appointee from the governor or the uh, the boards appointed by the governor and the board accepts the general manager. So uh, in many people's opinion, Jace has done a great job with SJRA and helping us and be part of who we are. So it, it just got under the skin of a few directors. Um, and so they thought that this would be a, a good way, I guess, initially to censure the legislature or legislators who did this and to put um, information out there that we, the directors of the MUDs, were not in favor of that um, passing of that law, if you will, and forcing him to resign. Um, so that's kind of my skinny on it as far as I know. And so this is just basically in support of him and in support of his past tenure with the SGRA. But as Brian said earlier, you know, going going to the point of, you know, our mission is to get a good balance between groundwater and surface water and to, you know, right. manage the water needs as well as we possibly can and so forth and so on. But I think the overall initial intent was this is to just say we're not happy. Yeah, I mean, I mean is that describes everything we had worked on in all those additional meetings I went to it was always about what's best for the woodlands. Right. So. Did I, did I miss anything there? Mischaracter? Okay. All right. So then we don't necessarily have to. Um, we could table this till next month, I that, think. That is correct, mainly because the other ones haven't quite gotten it yet. Right. So, yeah. yeah. You can t you can defer. It. Another district did that, okay. so that they could mull it over and send me any comments or questions that you have in the meantime. Be happy to answer that offline. And that's what I would suggest we do, so okay. that. I one other question. Um, if we want to talk about this, uh, is it best based on policy to ask questions to you versus us discussing it since so we can avoid the board? Correct. Correct. Got we it. Don't wanna, 
So okay. questions, yeah, or I, I, comments. I just don't yeah. want to do that. But if yeah. we're one on one and it happens to come up in conversation, I would guess that's okay. But if if there's three or more of us together, we shouldn't right, talk about it. I, yeah, I was just wanting to be super safe. So if you're going to have a I question, I just reach out to you. Well, it, you know, it gets sticky. You talk to people, then you talk to a third person, say, "Well, this is what this person said." And now you got to walk. So it's it's usually best to always use GM as your intermediary. Gotcha. If you uh, yeah. you know ask oh, uh, right. ask questions about right. it. And he can, um, you know, he can respond and you know, answer questions you may have. And what about talking to directors of other months? There's no issue there. Okay. There's no, no Don, you do not share. Yes. Okay. And I can share with you some of the other players that are involved. Yeah. You want to contact them directly, they'll give you a little bit more information. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's important that before we approve or sign off on this, right. that everybody has a good understanding of what's okay. going on and feels comfortable. Because initially, I didn't feel comfortable, quite honestly. Um, but that's why I wanted to talk about it. So I think by tabling it, it gives each of us a little bit more opportunity to get a better understanding. And so that when we come back to it, we feel good about what we're doing. Yeah, okay. I mean, I would suggest just to make the process not be unduly that, um, that it, if you're going to have any communication with other directors, you have a point person. So if there's other directors that have a question, you can direct that to to Eric, but have one person who may be the point person for the mud for coordinating with with other districts to um, wordsmith this to the extent that y'all feel necessary. Otherwise, it's going to be unruly to yeah. have. In my opinion, I don't think we would want to change or, you know, we don't want to be the author of this necessarily, but we don't mind getting on the bandwagon if it makes sense to us. And I think that's Sean's point. Um, and so, yeah, let's just direct all of our questions and comments to Eric and then let him field it out from there and then We'll put it back on the agenda. Is that fair enough? That's okay. absolutely. Thanks, Jim. All right. Item number 14, receive Woodlands Water Staff information on pavement and underground utility conditions along Trade Center Boulevard and Donwick Drive. And this is what Ron was talking about earlier. So, Eric, can you uh, update us? Sure. Uh, first off, let me, let me before I get to uh, Ron's uh, part of it, I uh, wanted to share with you shared some pictures. Um, as you recall, we had identified two inlets that uh, were in need of repair, uh, had some pretty pretty significant drops, and uh, the grates as well were um, kind of teetering almost. Um, when, we, when we went into one of them uh, in particular, the structure underneath was uh, worse than we thought, and so that got us looking at the next one down the street. Uh, which had the same issue. And so we were concerned, although from the surface, it didn't look as bad as the others did, uh, <laughs> knew that it was only a matter of time. And so we were able to um, get actually a, a pretty good, a favorable uh, price to do the third one since they were already there. Um, so we actually got three of them done. Um, one was just a little bit north of the two that were originally contemplated. Um, here's pictures of, I have, <laughs> I actually have, Pictures of the old one, if you want to, old ones, if you want to remember what they looked like. But here's what I passed out today was pictures of the repaired ones, and yeah. they look real good and, mm -hmm. and they're uh, stored up and solid and in good shape. So that looks that. great. I mean, it's less than a mile from my home. We move, we run around there, I drive that every day to and from work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I was I was going to ask uh, how we got the third one done because I remember we discussed too, and I thought I, I guess we got a good deal. So ended up being about half of the other one, cool. other ones um, price wise. And so that all will be processing that. But, um, so the other part of that was around the corner. Uh, that's what Ron was mentioning. Uh, just to give you and I know Mike can probably talk. This is newer to me, but I, I think I understand the history of it. And Mike can Mike can uh, uh, help me if I need. But uh, this has been I think uh, Ron's brought this up a couple of times over the last few years. Each time we've reached out to this is a county road. We've reached out to the county. Uh, they've driven it. I with Jim drove it and did the bumps like, like Ron did. Uh, the county's done that as well. Uh, the county indicated to us that they don't believe that it's an issue uh, great enough for them to do anything. Uh, I think Ron's um, um, assertion is that the dips are caused by um, settling of the com or compaction of the soil way back when, when it was built. And uh, I know that um, over the last few years, whenever it was, 
we've actually gone into the pipe to confirm that it's structurally sound, that it doesn't have cracks in it. So it's a lot of times you might have dips or you'll have a sinkhole because because dirt is getting into a hole in the pipe. We don't have that. So whatever the dips are caused by, whether it's the pipe or not, or whether it's settling or whatever. I mean, I I had lived there for 15 years. I the, the dips were there when I lived in Harpers. Um, so uh, it doesn't to me it doesn't appear like it's getting worse. Uh, whether or not it was caused by settling many many years ago, I don't know that. Um, the county doesn't believe it's an issue at this point. So um, that's where we are. I know that that doesn't necessarily meet Ron's expectations at this point, but that's where we are. Um, so <laughs> let's say that, um, you know, there, I, I, I guess we find out that there is something not wrong on how it's built. It's just bumpy now. Um, when I drive that road, my, my kids say, oh, we're going down the bumpy street. Like, yeah. I, I, I get that. Um, but if it's not, I, I guess, structurally wrong or inaccurate, it's just a bumpy street for some reason. I'm, I'm not an engineer. Um, what would the resolution be? Just leave it um, and suck it up and, and deal with it? Or is there a um, a process kind of like the water pipes where they come through and uh, adjust roads every once in a while? Because and the reason I think of this is just before the bumps, um, there was a bumpy railroad track and I know that's a different governing body, but um, someone in our neighborhood requested for that to get fixed and it was done like within a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm just curious if if it's not wrong or bad or how it's made it's just bumpy for some unknown reason. Um, what's the future plan for it? to not be bumpy 10 years from now yeah. so so on let's say for instance a county road um county goes out and looks at their roads all the time uh if the county deemed that there was an issue with a road whatever it is uh it could be anything uh, a dip bump crack whatever it is they would go out and identify whether or not it's something that they need to take care of um if they felt like the issue in this case a dip was near another municipality's infrastructure like this. In this case, we have a drainage pipe that crosses the road there. Um, then they could say, well, we have we have a road problem. It appears the road problem has been caused by your infrastructure. Therefore, you fix the street or we'll fix it and you pay for it. Uh, so they, I have seen that happen. Um, in this case, they've looked at it and said, well, I don't think I have a road problem. That I would do anything about. So they've said whether it's because of your pipe or not. There's other dips in the road where we don't have a pipe. Mm -hmm. So there's similar things going on along that stretch that we don't have a pipe there. Uh, but this one, and the, the worst one that's been noted is there is a pipe in that area. <clears throat> so, so even yeah, if in the it, future, if it gets worse and the county changes their mind and says, okay, now it's worse enough, it's, it's bad enough. Um, and then, then they say, well, it's bad enough and your pipe's near here. Mm -hmm. So we think or prove to us that it, you know, wasn't your pipe that caused this. Then we'd have to have, we'd have to figure something out. Uh, I got a question, kind of the flip side of what Sean's asking. When you mentioned these two inlets or these inlets, you said that one of them was worse than we initially thought after we got in there. And looked at. What if there is a situation in the, with this infrastructure under the road on trade center that is the case we don't see it unless we go in there and look at it or dig something out or do a core sample to what ron's describing what if we do what if someone does that and we do determine that it wasn't laid properly or we didn't have the right base or whatever the terminology is but what then we would have to coordinate with the county but most likely they would ask us to fix the road so it's our problem and then, and then they the would fix the road. Would we have to fix the road or they would fix the road? Once we fixed our problem, if that were the case, would then they fix their road? They'd probably have us fix it. That's what they do with the put in the yeah. surface for on. What's the cost roughly for something like that? Uh, so I well, park. it depends. Um, it, it depends. I don't know. I mean, it depends on how <clears throat> I have to look at the, the rules, um, design rules, but if they make us do a whole panel, for instance, from from 
expansion joint to expansion joint and the whole thing, that could get pretty costly. Uh, 50. The road's got a lot of patches on it already. Yeah, yes. As you know, as you all have seen, and, and none of those were from or that we or right. county or somebody that patched. Yeah, and there's so much 18 wheeler traffic on there, obviously, as you know. And I think that's yeah. the culprit of everything is the yeah, it just beats that road up yeah. pretty bad. Um, I think the bigger I think the bigger issue is is when is the county gonna see the rest of the road in its condition and say it's time to do something because of all the heavy traffic. And that may take care of all of it eventually. Uh, when they get focused enough to say, I gotta we gotta do something about this. So maybe it's a conversation we residents, not we this board, have to have with the township and get the township involved with the county and have the county assess the whole road from from the township standpoint, not the mud standpoint. Because we don't have authority over the rest of the road, right? Well, we don't have authority over anything, but if the one area of the road where our infrastructure lies, and if that is causing a problem, then of course we're responsible. But if the rest of the road is like that from different pieces, then that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, if we end up having one blocked it smooth and the rest of the road remains <laughs> bumpy. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive. Well, and the other point goes back to what you said about the, the 18 wheelers. I mean, if we fix this thing and it's the 18 wheelers cars and the problem, that's an industrial road. Technically, it's not a residential road. And so if they just keep every five years that, you know, by the wear and tear, we're going to have to do this or somebody's going to have to do this. It can't they can't keep blaming it on the pipe. Right or or the infrastructure of the pipe. So, all right. So just to summarize, then Eric, I know you went out and looked at it. You and um, Jim and I actually rode with you guys. And then you had the county go out and look at it. The county did their assessment to whatever they would do under normal circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. So based on your experience and what you saw in the pipe and no damage to the pipe from future from past um, examinations of the pipe. The county looked at the road, said that they don't feel it needs to be adjusted because the dip's not deep enough or whatever the case may be. As it stands today, there's nothing we can do or will do at this point. It's my understanding. Correct. Is that right? OK, so then going forward, I guess I'll take it to the township and see if the township can have a dialogue with the county and see if the county can assess the road in general, not just the parts that we ask them to look at, but from a residential standpoint, assess the road in general. But as far as we stand today, mud 39, I mean, I'm assuming we're close on this issue. Is that kind of my assumption? I know it's not what you want to hear at this point, Ryan, but we're going to try to get to a resolution, but it doesn't seem like the mud needs to bring the resolution is what I'm saying. <clears throat> or what I'm suggesting, not saying. Uh, I think so, since we're on the. It's on the topic if you ask a question. Yeah, we're on, it's on the topic. The actual dip in the road is less than three feet wide. It coincides specifically with a sewer line that goes underneath that road. You can determine very easily if it is a uh, contractor deficiency or if it's something else by simple hand auger at each side of the of the road like to see if there's semen stabilized sand there. If there's no semen stabilized sand, it is very apparent then that, that there that is any uh, deficiency in utility construction that a, that a, a uh, uh, engineer who pseudo on command work should have yeah, made that. Uh, I, I do have a meeting tomorrow morning with uh, our county commissioner. It's on an entirely different area yeah. because uh, Coast Engineering is designing a new airport for Montgomery County. It's very safe. So we need to visit with him. You're talking about Matt Gray, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, but uh, uh, I was going to break that up with him also. Okay. Well, why don't you, Ron, bring it up to him and let him know that yeah. we discussed it. As far as we're concerned, Mud 39 is concerned, it's not an infrastructure problem because what you're de describing as the stabilizing sand, I've got to believe there's other parts throughout the woodlands in the state and the country that maybe not have had stabilizing sand, but yet don't have this issue. And it could very well be because of the weight of all the trucks going across it. Maybe the road itself was not built to sustain the, the weight of the trucks. Maybe that's the issue. Utility districts normally enter into the Woodlands area. Specify that they're supposed to be meeting the, the requirements of the city of Houston. And the city of Houston requirements specify cement stabilized sand backfill because of this very issue of French settlements. Well, let me ask you this and then we're going to move on. But a point of clarification you say and have to do 
uh, has to go with the uh, specifications of Houston. What about the specifications of Conroe? Would might, would the Harper's Landing area not fall into the Conroe specifications more so than Houston? Both the city of Houston and the city of Conroe both have that same same, standby. same level of specifications. Okay. Well, why don't you do this, Ron? Why don't you mention it to the commissioner? Let me take it to the township. Again, let's take it off the table of MUD 39, because from what I'm hearing, it doesn't seem like it's an issue for us. Maybe we can get an assessment down the road, but let's see what the what the commissioner says first. One last thing. I'll completely remove that section from place it. It would have to be done in two sections. I estimate the construction cost to be under six thousand dollars. Under six thousand dollars to complete both sections of the road? Yes. For, for just where the path pipe is. Okay, fair enough. That's good to know. I'm going to use his contractor. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Any other questions or comments from the board? All right. Thank you, Ron, very much for bringing that up again. All right. Moving on to item number six, 15. Consider an act on Lone Star Groundwater Conservation uh, District Phase 3 subsidence study. It's 43 through 45. Received a letter. Um, it was written to uh, all groundwater users uh, you receive um, from Lothar. The, the letter is um, basically Lothar is moving into what they call their phase three uh, for their subsidence study mm -hmm. that they're doing. Part of that includes getting cores done to identify uh, potentially the compressivity of the aquifers. That's kind of what they're doing. Um, the letter indicates that perhaps they're asking for some funding help and or uh, the identification of some locations for those, of course. Um, earlier this week at the SRA GRP meeting, uh, Jim Spagner from Lone Star indicated that funding wasn't necessarily the focus at, at this point, uh, but locating the, the locations uh, is more of the focus. And so um, he indicated that he had two sites they were looking at and then uh, SRA indicated that they may have a couple sites to consider. So that's kind of the latest. I'm not sure there's any action to be had on it, but I just want to give you the update. OK, so when I read through the letter, I could clearly see they were asking for funding. Yeah. And my question would have been, you know, what part of this would we be willing to contribute to, if any? But you're saying they don't need that now or they're not looking for the funding now. They're looking for yeah. locations. Do we collectively as Woodlands Water know of any locations to recommend? Because they're not specifically asking by 39, I'm sure. You know, no. we have any specific, specific areas, but. Right, and if you look at the letter, sure. the, the map on the third page, I think, <laughs> there's some general locations to spread out the cores across the county to get a, a wide breadth of uh, information. Uh, on potential subsidence in different areas. Um, those aren't specific locations, those are general locations. Um, I think um, Ed Shackelford indicated that there might be a location in or, in or around the woodlands uh, to at least uh, facilitate one of those proposed locations, but that's very preliminary. There was no commitment, it was just an open dialogue. And so when they do want funding, they'll come back to us, I'm assuming. Yeah, okay. All right, so at this point, no action is required, just information. Yes. Any questions? Sean, you had a question? I don't have a question any longer. <laughs> it was answered. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I, I guess I make a comment. Uh, uh, the, the meeting you're referring to is the one that was done several months ago. The what? The, the meeting um, where they showed this data was the meeting at the, at, at the Lone Star facility several months ago. Um, actually, uh, it was last month or the month before uh, GRP committee meeting uh, at SRA where um, Jim Spagner gave a presentation on this. Okay. And then he attended again this week uh, to kind of give an update. Okay. I mean, I was at a meeting at Lone Star several months ago and they showed this exact mm -hmm. picture. And really, I would say most of this information. Um, I, I just kind of assumed they would have done something more given the time that has elapsed. Because back then, people in the audience were giving suggestions and they weren't taking them. 
Um, I mean, they, they told us where subsidence was bad in the woodlands, but they were still figuring out the areas. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's a, um, a sensitive topic and uh, the people involved, it's kind of a sensitive topic, but I, I kind of figured they would have found an answer by now. So. All right, well, we'll, they'll come back to us if they need us, basically. All right, thank you. All right. I, she said, ask a follow up to our meeting for December 12th. Maybe they're getting here. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Um, item number 16, receive and and or act on the general manager's report. Okay, just a few things. Um, I wanted to uh, just report that uh, Jeannie, Jeannie and I uh, sat through a presentation uh, that was given to us by Arthur and uh, the chief appraiser, Janet Jennings Doyle of MCAT. Um, I guess last week, uh, where they they showed us the proposed 2024 budget for MCAD. Um, some of the highlights um, in the budget going forward is uh, for the two bigger bigger increases. One is to change out the software that MCAD uses. I think the software is about 15 years old, as reported, and it's an upgrade that's desperately needed. Also, there were some increases in ARB funding. Uh, for the increased protests that they're experiencing for the review board, uh, person review board. So uh, those were kind of the two big highlights of the budget. There's nothing to be approved. Um, there'll be more to come. Uh, it, it'll go before the MCAD board for approval in September. Uh, by August. August. So guess we'll have a public meeting uh, in August, and then the after the public meeting closes, then the uh, board of directors will either vote up or down on the budget. Right now, the taxing units received it by the 15th of June. Taxing units have the ability to look at it. If they have any comments, share it back to uh, Chief Appraiser. Yeah. Eric, what's our, what's our direct link here? We don't have to, I mean, they're gonna obviously pr approve their budget and they're gonna have increases, which we have to support. I understand right. that, but we just then put that in our budgets, right? right. Based on the cost. So there's no direct, okay. Right. right. A um, couple other items. I uh, just wanted to point out the Lone Star Groundwater Conservation District did receive uh, and accept the resignation of their general manager. So uh, through 2023, you will have a new leadership in the three major water agencies in Montgomery County, which is a pretty significant thing. From from WWA, SRA, and Lone Star, we'll all have new general managers uh, by the end of this year which is a pretty significant thing. Um, so I'll be, I'll be looking to work work with those uh, other GMs and um, we'll see where it goes. And on that on that topic, Chris mentioned earlier about the letter that was presented to the trustee board stating that the board of directors feels like even though Jace has left, they'll find somebody eventually put in his place, but that everything should go pretty smoothly there, that we shouldn't feel any issues with that at all. So they did say that to us. And of course, we've gotten to experience your style and movement already so far. We don't have any issues with that. And I don't personally don't know enough about the Lone Star to know that it's an issue or not. But you're right, it is significant because you got three changes in leaderships in three major areas of yeah. water and, and water usage, so. Yes, uh, just a couple of quick other items. Um, we have some uh, service tenures at WWA. Yesterday was Mike's 19th uh, anniversary. No, I, I made a mistake, it's happening today. Is it today? <laughs> the 21st. Well, there you go. Congratulations, Mike, and thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, Dan Kennard uh, is 44 years. I read that. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, as we started last month, I just wanted to also uh, kind of continue uh, a report. <clears throat> John, tell you a little bit about the publication outreach uh, program strategies that we're doing. So I'd like to ask. Hello, John. Uh, page 57, you've got the contingent report there. And just going to touch on some highlights <clears throat> from. Uh, from June from the last month. So we we exited the end of May, we exited the second quarter of our strategic plan. Uh, which the, the focus of that was on water quality. Now we're moving to water conservation we have the summer months. So you'll see a change in marketing materials, a change in focus in our publications. Some encouraging metrics and tracking uh, that that may speak to uh, some traction we're gaining with the strategic plan. 
uh, that second bullet there on our website. <clears throat> so average page views um, are up significantly over last year and, and up significantly over the five year average. And um, done a number of things to streamline the website to make it easier to pay your bill through the website um, and to find information. Uh, the hope there, it's, it's pretty soon to conclude, but the hope there is that when folks are landing, they're having an easier time seeing all the good stuff we've got on there and availing themselves of that. So our email, another major tool that we use that weekly irrigation email and newsletter. That's important for us for a number of reasons. One is we've got over 22,000 contacts in that list. The content there feeds a lot of our social media. Uh, and it's also uh, continuing to prove uh, popular. Our open rate percent of folks that are actually opening up the email, reading it, that's up 11% over the past 12 months. And then uh, that leaves us well above the industry average for open rate. And then our click rate is where we're, we're right about industry average, but, we, but we've been able to um, increase that 50% over the last year. So we're doing better um, over the last year. We need to do even better going forward. That's a click rate, John. What is okay, that? So that's when you open the email, <clears throat> we purposely embed things in there for folks to click through to, uh, mostly to our website. Uh, or it can be other outlets, but um, primarily to the website. So they're opening it and they're engaging it. What would you ideally want the click rate to be? 100. <laughs> well, yeah. Good answer. Yeah. All right. Well, um, Good answer. we want to continue to uh, to grow it. Okay. Uh, we're at about the industry standard now. Um, yeah. So that's a benchmark. We just want to continue to improve. Okay. And we also know that we're reaching people in different ways. So, so the person that doesn't click on that may be seeing the same information in a different arena that we're putting out as well. So it just depends on what the content is, but because we're doing a lot of, we're in a lot of different outlets. Yeah, that's a really key point. Uh, we want all of our outlets to tie to each other, to move folks between platforms so they can see that we have different platforms. And then they, you know, we, as we all do, we tune into one channel or two, right, for most information. So help help folks find uh, the channel that works for them and get their information through that. Uh, our main marketing outlets right now, Community Impact, that's print and digital, Chronicle, that's digital, Woodlands Community Magazine, that's print. There's a digital version, but um, most folks don't find that because they find it on their kitchen table once every month automatically. So that, that's a key one. That still rates uh, as the highest or the single greatest source uh, folks identify for where they get their information from. Uh, so we have a two-third two page ad in that every month. We also have an article uh, that publishes most months. The current one for June is on CCRs. We're sending those out this month, so time's up with that. Watch for uh, July's piece on water loss. There was a significant reduction there that we've achieved through the AMI system. Uh, and then August will be a water conservation piece. On the I'll point to the uh, the next page, uh, 58 at the bottom there, uh, you'll just see some samples of some social media content we've been pushing out as we're heightening the focus on infrastructure and building posts uh, the value that our community should place on on the proper uh, condition of that infrastructure. So we're, we're heightening that focus, and you'll see that continuing to heighten time. A big part of that is bringing on this. Uh, Communications consultant for that uh, straight put that out to bid. Uh, those proposals were due on Friday. We got five. We have those in hand now. So we'll those large staff will review those, provide our input to SDRA on those um, proposals, move through that process, and uh, with luck, we will have somebody in hand by uh, late August. Okay. I noted down here July, that's that's not that's going to be a bit longer than that, but hopefully lay off. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, one more item on uh, my report. Uh, I have to report that uh, it's, it came to our attention this month that we found a, an illegal drainage tie-in into the ditch um, 
on the east side of the district um, from the Glen Eagles area. Uh, there is a kind of a mobile home type of um, development that's that's being built there on on your eastern edge near that near the ditch. Um, there we identified that there was kind of a uh, an improved uh, swale that was cut uh, and empties into your ditch. So um, coincidentally, the engineer is is also Mr. Sikowski uh, on that project. Um, we've spoken with him. Uh, we've let him and the owner as well of the project as well know that uh, we're going to need a little bit more information um, on that. And so I think what we would like to do, it's not on the agenda today, but what we'd like to do is maybe put an item on your next agenda to discuss it in a little bit more detail. Yeah. Gather and what the process going forward should be. So, uh, it's an RV park. RV park. Okay, there you go. So, when you say like an, in, an inlet was dug, just like a little ditch was dug into our drainage ditch, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah, and you're, yeah, you'll have a, 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 a berm and a swale on your high bank. And so, it's adjacent to that. Um, and so it's it's kind of cut across that bank. So is it a trespassing thing? Uh, Aside from all the issue, the health issues and the safety issues, is it a trespassing? Did somebody literally have to trespass to dig this? They did. Okay. They did. If I might add. Well, I don't I don't want to get out of line here. I know it's part of your part of your presentation, but I don't know should we engage the public and no. Yeah. We're gonna put it on the agenda, Ron, for next week next, or I'll, next I'll, month. I'll, next month, yeah. So well, okay. Thank you, Eric. That's good to know. And we do want to address that. I had on the GM Okay. Um, but in addition, okay, well, let's move on then. So on the uh trustee report. Uh so there was a lot of discussion about the AC. We've talked about that AC line. We talked mm -hmm. about that here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was the trustees did vote uh, to authorize me to write a letter of accommodation to Fort James Houston. Uh, so we're I'm about complete with that. My intention is to go to the SGA board meeting tomorrow uh, and present that to the board and read it to them and present it to them. Perfect. Thank you. And I noted, uh, Eric, you. It did add in here a couple of articles regarding Jason's resignation. And so for you guys, if you want more information, that may be a good place to start as well as just Googling some information as well and see what you can get there. Uh, any need for a closed session? None. All right. Okay. So that takes care of 18 and 19 uh, matters to be placed on future agenda. Uh, you just discussed one, Eric. But with the uh, illegal tapping into the drainage ditch. And um, should we also put a, the agenda item back on to follow up on the Trade Center issue, Trade Center Boulevard issue, as far as the road and conversations with the county and the township? Well, I, I, again, I feel like we've done our part in terms, unless we determine it was something that was done infrastructure wise, but I feel like we've done our part. We've addressed this thing three times. We've gone out, we've looked at it, county's gone out and looked at it. Yeah. Um, unless the county comes up with something different or whatever, I don't see where we need to have another. No, I mean, I, I, it's, at this point, it would be up to the county to determine it's our issue, right? I think so. Agreed. So I don't know why we would okay. put that in. All right. I think the be on That's yes, yeah. exactly. Some information once necessary. We'll also have on all the mud agendas the uh, typical item for. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any other ideas? Nothing else. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, we are adjourned. Okay. I do have an issue with the overdressing of our.